what's going to be? How's it hanging? How's it happening? You guys, what is this? this is Kevin from the Chord Progression Podcast. It is March 8th, and this episode, <clears throat> this episode is nuts in terms of just the depth that we go into. And then, of course, towards the end, we just have a lot of fun. So before we jump into this episode, I want to thank our sponsors first, Phoenix Fitness. Yeah, we're in March, you know, two months into 2021. Oh my God, that already happened. And, you know, summer's going to be right around the corner. If you're looking, you know, get in the gym, you know, work, work out, you know, improve on your fitness, achieve those fitness goals, you know, pump the air and get strong like all the other, be fit like Johnny Bravo. Hey there, baby. Okay, that was weird. But if you're looking to do something like that, you know, start that workout program, get everything going. That's perfect. Go and do it. If you're looking to, you know, help achieve those fitness goals and prepare right, recover right, because that's very important as well. Phoenix Fitness has you covered with many different supplements, such as their pre-workouts, both stim and stim free. I use stim free stuff because <laughs> ah! I'm crazy enough as it is. I don't need any of that extra caffeine and those extra stimulants in me. Uh, they also have like different BCLA recovery compounds to help you recover after your workout proteins help you build muscle you know am pm after your workout proteins as well creatine help you build muscle muscle it's literally anything you might need to achieve your fitness goals phoenix fitness has for you so our listeners get 15 percent using the code m s o t d at at checkout link description below think things face second one is from custom debuts what does custom debuts do well they create these random custom posters for you with any musical artist that you want, with any album that you want from them, or any song that you want from them, and they'll create this cool poster that you can have, like, you know, have the cuffs, have the artwork from that album with the track listing any way you want, or the song lyrics on a poster in any fashion that you want. So what you do is you send them what you want, the artist, the song, or the album, and they'll come back to you within 48 hours of a concept of idea that you might like, and you have the ability to make as many edits as possible. When you're ready to go, be like, yeah, that's what I want. You can get it either on, like, you know, normal poster paper, canvas print so that's kind of cool or you can have a full-on like aluminum sign made for this stuff so be this cool person like the coolest cat in the office coolest cat in the garage coolest person with the coolest rec room and just be such as the envy of all your music friends with a cool custom post from custom debuts yeah that's all i'm gonna say about that so our listeners get 10 percent using the code cpp10 at checkout for custom debuts website the link's in the description of the podcast as well thank custom debuts now on to our featured presentation our featured guest so we have this band called The Moment in Pompeii on the podcast today. They have a brand new EP called Longing for Substance coming out on April 1st. That is no joke. But they have a brand new song called Hands of God coming out on March 11th. And we go deep into this song, the heaviness of it, the depths of it. We analyze stuff from the intro, from the guitar if they use, from the vocal performance, everything about that. But we also dive in deep into its meaning as well. And I do want to issue a little bit of a trigger warning here for you guys because we do get into a, some sort of some more, you know, heavily emotionally impactful stories, including one about abuse as well. So I want to put that out front for you. Um, it will be labeled in the podcast as well so that you'll know when it comes, it comes up. So if it's something you kind of, you know, want to potentially back away from, from i understand but it is a very powerful thing to listen to and it puts a lot of context into it i still would suggest listening to it, but again if you're not comfortable listening to it i totally understand that's what will be marked out there for you as well if you're looking to potentially you know not listen to that part of the conversation i do again will implore you to listen because it is a heavily impactful moment and it puts a lot into context in terms of the song and flies context in terms of the meaning of everything and just really is something that it is it, just it's real that's what I put it. It's real. So I want to thank again them for sharing that story. But like, this is an incredible episode. I'm not going to lie. You're not going to want to, put, you know, stop this pause or anything. So let me stop rambling. Please welcome a moment in Pompeii because we have Antonio, Sam, Sam, and Josh. Are you guys ready? You better be. Let's go! Yeah. Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of the Court Progression Podcast, I got to thank my friend on TikTok, Miss Erica Leanne, because she posted about this band like, hey, you got to go check out this band. And I'm like, you know what? Let's have a listen to them. They're more melodic metal course. That got me going, we must listen to more. I must talk to these guys again on the podcast. They have a brand new song called Hands of God coming out on March 11th with a brand new EP called Longing for Substance coming out on April 1st, and that is no joke. It is coming out on April 1st. We're not fooling you there. So please welcome Sam, Antonio, Josh, and Sam from the band A Moment in Pompeii. So guys, welcome to the Core Progression Podcast. Hey, Kevin. Thanks for having us on. Yeah, thanks. Happy to be here. Thanks for being on, guys. I know you guys are in Pennsylvania, so how's everything going, you know, as you guys get ready to release a new song and release the new EP? How's everything been going on your end? Oh, man, it's good. It's good. We've been going through 
you know, a lot of changes. Everybody's real busy. Uh, three of us are in Pittsburgh. Antonio is actually out in Cleveland. So whenever we get together, there's a lot of driving that's going on. But we're slowly piecing this release together, trying to, uh, you know, put out the best music we can while we're working on our next project as well. But it's all good, man. It's all good. Don't forget about Douglas, our native Tennessee. Oh, yeah. Doug is Doug is not on the call right now, but he's our lead guitar player. He wrote most of the EP um, himself, uh, but he's out. In, he's on tour right now um, with Skillet, believe it or not, doing their video stuff. Um, but that's what he that's what he does for a living uh, is his tours with all these bands out there. But he's uh, he lives in Nashville and uh, has to come all the way up when we have shows or anything like that. So shout out Douglas. My God, Douglas seems like he's doing as much as possible, especially, you know, you're on the road with Skillet right now. So if you're watching this, Doug, you're still on the road with Skillet. Hi, Doug. How's it going? Hope you're enjoying your time with Skillet and, you know, videos. And hopefully some of their pyro doesn't burn you if you're getting that close to the video. No, honestly, that would be an honor. <laughs> getting burnt by Skillet's pyro. What's more metal? Half of his face is just a giant scar. No, what would probably be more metal is if it was like, you know, if it was Romsheen's pyro where you're going to get like half your face charred and then you literally become two-faced from Batman. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. We're going to have to tell Douglas then he's going to have to change his name to legally to Harvey Dent. Oh, shit. That's actually already, which is crazy. <laughs> yeah. It's like one word, Harvey, Harvey Dent. Douglas Harvey Dent Boylan. You can just be his middle name or his alias at this point. <laughs> there you go, man. Honestly, no offense to Doug, but if if his half of his face got burned off, it'd probably be an upgrade. <laughs> oh, it's like no, he's probably the prettiest man. guy in the band. I'm just, I'm just jealous. I love when people preface an incredibly insulting statement with no, offense. like as if somebody's supposed to just be like, oh yeah, no, no problem. It's cool. It's like, it's like, you know, offense, but get ready because whatever I'm going to say is probably going to offend you with whatever it is. But hey, no offense, man. No offense. Oh, man. Yeah. I love Doug to death, though. He put he put his heart and soul into this and in, into the CP and he's he's just working his butt off. So shout out Ugly Doug. Ugly Doug. <laughs> he's not even here to defend himself. Man. Yeah. <laughs> what makes it great? Doug's uh, actually going to text us like in 20 minutes and be like, yeah, I quit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh he's got that he's he's a good looking dude he's got that jesus hair right now dude he could baptize the shit out of you man no wonder why skillet asked him to go on tour and be their video guy if he looks like jesus and got that jesus flow going fits the whole vibe of because they're on winter jam right now i believe correct yeah yeah that's right man fits the whole entire vibe of that festival and that whole entire tour so makes a lot of sense Doug's actually he's filling in for jesus on tour actually it's pretty- Jesus got uh, COVID. <laughs> Had to isolate. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> right, Doug. It's your time to shine. I, I got to be out for two weeks, but I got to quarantine for two weeks. We're, I got to wait for the negative, you know, PR test, whatever it is to come in. You got to cover me on this one, man. Turn that water into wine. Oh, my gosh. He, like, comes on stage. The curtains go back with arms wide open by Creed is just blaring. <laughs> <laughs> And then, no, but he's got to come in, like, if they're going to play with arms wide open, he's got to come in, like, that one guy that was, like, wrapped in the sheets when Creed played, like, the 2001, like, Thanksgiving Day game in Dallas. <laughs> he's got to come in, like, that shirtless, just, okay, just all of a sudden with arm or can you take me higher? Oh, God. And for some reason, the Dallas Cowboys are also at Winter Jam. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, they... They got knocked out of the playoffs in the first round this year, so uh, they very well could have been at Winter Jam just, you know, wallowing in self-pity. To the delight of everyone that's not a Dallas Cowboys fan. True, oh, that's true. That's actually, I feel like so most people yeah. at Winter Jam are wallowing in self-pity. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> oh, dang. Oh, damn. Well, how about we just, how about we jump into the brand new, because you got the brand new EP coming out and the brand new song, Hands of God. So let's start with the with the new EP as a whole, because when it comes to the EP, again, coming out in March 1st, I know you guys said that Doug really worked a lot of it. So when it comes to the whole entire inspiration behind the EP, what was your thought process going through this thing? How was it created? And like, how did this whole entire thing come to be with this new EP coming out on April 1st? 
Yeah, I guess I'll kind of speak to that. So we started writing this thing. Uh, it was probably like two years ago. I was living in Kent, Ohio, which if you know anything about Ohio, you think like Ohio is pretty bad. Sorry, Antonio. Kent, <laughs> Ohio is the lowest of low <laughs> as far as that goes. Antonio's in the cool part of Ohio. It's I not was... too far from me, though, I will say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but that was that was a time where I was just like, what is going on in my life? There was a lot of changes going on. And Doug was just pumping out these demos and sending them over to us. And uh, they were they were real uh, mediocre. And then he worked on them and sent better ones. And they were great. And we ended up with um, four tracks that we really... Uh, we really believe in uh, it like really tells the story of um, where Doug was in his, in his uh, musical career, where I was with my feelings. Cause it's when you write lyrics, it's just all, all the feelings. And I basically write like I'm a sophomore girl in high school and I just let the feelings flow, man. I let the tears just drop on the page. And then, you know, everybody else just fills in from there. Antonio just bangs the drums and uh, makes it sound beautiful. And uh, yeah, we ended up with a nice little four four song EP that we hope is going to, you know, take us places and we'll we'll see where it goes. Well, shoot, I mean, shout out to Doug for, you know, sending you guys bad demos and all of a sudden work on them and just turning bad demos into great demos. Like, OK, you know, maybe we're not going to work on these songs. All of a sudden just works on them a little bit. Send them back to you guys like, OK, these are the songs. These are the ones we got to work with. And then, Sam, you saying that, you know, writing the lyrics for something like this being in the mindset of a sophomore girl in high school and just letting the emotions flow out. I mean, we all, we all went through high school. We all, you know, know that kind of mentality and know that idea of just all the emotions are going to be coming out all at once. And you're just going to be this like most open, just like most flowing emotions, whatever is going to cut, whatever you're feeling at that moment, it's going to come out full force. So when it comes to the four songs, this EP, when it comes to the lyrical content, the message behind those songs and the meaning behind them, I feel like especially from our end, we're going to feel the full-on emotion just come straight at us, especially through those lyrics and just through the way the instrumentals are going to enhance the lyrical quality in terms of telling that message and telling that story. Yeah, um, like all jokes aside, it it's an emotionally heavy record and it kind of takes you through, you know, a couple stages of where I've been. So the first song, title track, uh, not title track, the first track, uh, nice intro, kind of battling with my own self image and being uncomfortable in my body, which a lot of people can relate to. Um, second song is a is a fight with anxiety and self doubt. Um, third song is, uh, you know, about being brought up in a in a in a religious environment that you are uncomfortable in, you don't feel loved in, and uh, trying to piece that together in a kind of angry way and dealing with that anger. And then the fourth song kind of opens up and is like, all of those, you know, things are bad, but what do I have? I have great friends who challenge my perspective. I have great bandmates who have helped me through a lot and, you know, helped me express my feelings through this, you know, this beautiful art we can make together. So it kind of all comes full circle with a little positive twist at the end. Yeah, kind of bringing the whole entire idea back where you've gone through a couple of things in life, What you know, some things that are potentially very damaging and very harmful to you growing up. But as you got older, it's just, you know, being able to realize that some of those things that potentially were not the best really helped make you the person you are today, helped you develop the relationships you have today with your friends, with your bandmates, with your family, and creating something stronger for you to know exactly who you are, understand who you are and become confident in that so you can become the best person for yourself and for others around you and be the best bandmate overall. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what, these guys are, there's some really solid guys and uh, you know, they might not know it, but uh, the time in the band has been some of the best times of my life and they, you know, they've made my life a lot better. And that's the only nice thing I'm going to say about them uh, for the rest <laughs> of my life. That's it. It's, it's more than we deserve. Yeah, it is. <laughs> But it's recorded and it's not going away, man. I mean, we got it. We, we got it recorded. We got it on live. You know, it's going to be there for them it's to always reference ring, back. It's going to be my ringtone, Sam, just to let you know. Oh, <laughs> cute. <laughs> and then his text is like text, like alert tone, just going to be just Sam just saying like something like, appreciate you, appreciate you, appreciate you. And then, of course, you're going to get <laughs> Antonio Smith. Yeah, yeah. Every time it comes on. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, what about, I mean, we heard just like what Sam had talked about with the meanings behind the songs. So when it came to you guys working on these songs and really, you know, working through them, understanding those messages as well, how did that help you really work within the instrumentals to maybe from those demos, you know, make the tweaks and adjustments to make sure that you guys were also creating something behind that to really amplify everything and make sure that everything sounded as powerful as possible, that the message got across as beautiful as possible and that your instrumentals really helped guide the emotion of everything. I'm going to let you guys speak to that. I want to, I, I wasn't there for it. So I, I can't really offer much. <laughs> yeah. At, at this point in the process, well, <laughs> Sam was, uh, he's, he's been our engineer and he's, he actually produced our first EP. And so he was there for me just like crying into the microphone and all my vocal mess ups. But as far as the writing process, he, you know, it wasn't quite there. Yeah. The, uh, I think the approach I take is I just let Doug do his savant genius thing and then just kind of step in and take some of the credit for it. It's basically Doug will write his, his leads and <clears throat> some very, very basic crappy drum parts. And I'll take those drum parts and throw them away and write my own <laughs> over his guitar parts. And it, I'll I'll give him some credit though. He's he's actually written a few pretty good drum parts, but um, I like to actually take it to the kit and make it realistic because he'll he'll make some hits where it's like you need six limbs to hit it at once, and, and I only have four, so um, uh, so that's kind of where I come oh, in. I'm is, counting in my head right is, now. <laughs> I'll just leave it right there. <laughs> Um, yeah we do this yeah, thing no, and then I'll, I'll send him demos so no sorry go ahead sam well i was gonna say we do this thing to antonio where we just bombard him with like 300 beats per minute consistent double bass like we just give him the most unrealistic drum parts and he just has to like figure his I'm way just, through it i'm but just like, like i'm just like yeah i cannot play that <laughs> so yeah that's, uh, play of writing <laughs> with. let's bring oh. it down to earth Hey, you never know. Sometimes you might have to do 300 beats per minute and just do double bass every step of the way. And well, I mean, I mean it might just be the perfect thing for the song. It, it very well could be. You never know. You might just have to engineer it somehow to like make that work. Just do some like crazy thing where I mean, instead of like triple bass, instead of like double bass, like you have it set up where you can do like quadruple bass with like one like one step or something like that. Don't yeah, know how it's, it's possible, to, but <laughs> it's just time to become a better drummer in like a few weeks. So. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. That shouldn't be too hard, you know, just lock yourself in the house and all of a sudden, if the neighbors are like, what the hell is going on here at four in the morning, then they're just going to see you just like, have like five different like cans of like Monster Energy and Red Bull right in front of you, just like all whacked out of your mind, like, I gotta hit this, just keep going absolutely nuts, and next thing you know, I mean, you might crash and like, you know, be asleep for three straight days after that, however, might be a better drummer off the end of it, you never know true man practice is everything that's right we used to before we did this uh we started the band with uh um, dave dave and i on college and we would just jam out in the basement of our dorm room together and that's how we just originally write all these songs and that kind of transitioned into doug writing most of it and then he'll just send me parts on his own it'll just like a full song it's finished and he's like here you go what do you think of this and what do you think of this part um then i'm like wow some of this is really awesome some of this is like i don't, I don't even know where to start or how or how to <laughs> how, how could you play it um but in a lot of ways it's also made me a better drummer too because some of the um some of like the tempos and stuff i wasn't able to quite reach and then I'm like, you know what, let's just keep this. I'll just, I'll just keep hammering it out. I'll keep drinking those Red Bulls and like, and eventually I just get it and we just we play it at a show and it feels great. So reach those heights and put the work in. Um, so it's our writing style has definitely changed a lot, especially through COVID since we couldn't, you know, go anywhere or do anything. 
Uh, that's when I invested in my uh, first set of drum mics for the first time. And I was able to actually send out demos for the first time, like actual legit demos. And uh, so, yeah. But of course, you know, as time goes on, your writing process is going to change from you guys just like completely working together in a dorm room basement to working together, you know, as a whole, then with the pandemic happening, having to work uh, separate from each other. So being able to adapt to so many different, you know, styles of writing, so many different environments to write in as well has had to have helped the band ex like ex exponentially when it comes to writing this EP and working together, not only as a group, but also a part as well with, uh, with Doug and Nashville and uh, Antonio with you out in Cleveland as well. Right, yeah, because we all used to go to college together, so it was pretty easy when we were all able to just get together on weeknights or weekends, like, all the time. Um, and we just kind of had to adapt, and I think it's been, I think it's been working out actually pretty well, um, adapting to changes in all of our lives um, and you know, just kind of rolling with it. And I think we, I'm pretty excited for what we got coming out. Well, I honestly, after listening to uh, hands of God, one of the songs on the EP, I mean, I would be too ex excited for you guys as well, just because especially with the way that song sounds, I mean, that's going to come out. And I feel like there's a lot of people that's just going to hit exponentially based off of the theme and based off of how the delivery of both the instrumentals, the pacings and the vocals are just going to absolutely just potentially ransack someone's mind in terms of just revealing certain things to them and understanding different things about their lives. Because I mean, that track goes heavy, but it goes emotionally heavy at the exact same time as well. It's got uh, a good tempo. Yeah, it does. It's nice and fast. I don't know about blowing anybody's mind. Usually when I show people our stuff, they're like, what are you saying? <laughs> like, what did, what is that? You're just throwing up out of your mouth, but no, you're right. The lyrical content is heavy. And uh, you know, it'd be, I'd be interested to hear from all the other guys because that's that's what I wrote from my perspective of growing up in like a really strict, you know, um, Christian environment where there's been like church splits. I've seen just so many contradictions and stuff like that. And it just and uh, of course, like the huge things that have gone on, like with the, the Catholic Church that have hit the news and just the narcissism that I've seen in leadership and church. Uh, but a lot of the different members of the band have totally different experiences with the church as an organization with christianity in general um so it's been really interesting like throwing out such an angry song and other people going like okay what what did you mean here and and what you know what was your what's your story with this and just everybody being understanding but also being like you know that there is also another aspect to the story and it's what i saw through my eyes um so like i, I don't know if anybody wants to speak to that but some people feel similar to similarly to me and some people don't. And it's really cool that we can be harmonious in a band and come out with a song that really drives what I'm saying home, but also stays true to what, you know, what other people feel. Oh, absolutely. I, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say as, uh, on this as well, but between the three of you. And then I'll, I'll even jump in there as well afterwards, because I mean, I dove deep in the song and I try to like dive deep in the whole entire meaning of it. And I put even some of myself in there as well, because I grew up in a, in a Christian household as well. Went to Catholic school for all the way from like when I basically was like, you know, preschool. Yay. Went to literally a, like a Catholic preschool and then all the way like through Catholic high school as well. So I kind of want to hear where you guys are coming from when it comes to hands of God as well. And then, you know, I can jump in as well. So I can get like the rest of the band's perspective and then just, you know, a listener's perspective, a brand new perspective on mine as well. Yeah. I I'll say I'm similar in sentiment as Sam, probably just cause we have the same name. And so we just like immediately have the same thoughts, but um, yeah, I, I uh, grew up uh, in like a Christian household. My, you know, church was like a big part of my life. And like, I went to a Christian college, just like these guys, they went to Geneva I went to Grove City, which was like similar, similar in vibe and nature there. But um, yeah, I, I personally have have gone through a bit of a, I guess, I guess the term for it that is widely used is, is deconstruction. But it is kind of just like a, um, a moving away from like the organized aspect of Christianity for a lot of reasons. But I feel like uh, when I heard the, you know, the demos and stuff when we were recording um 
the vocals and everything for hands of God, it definitely like resonated with me. Um, in a lot of areas, I think the, it's obviously like angry from a lyrical content perspective, but it's definitely like, it's not just angry for the sake of being angry. It's angry for, from the sake of hurt, you know, and, and at least from my perspective. And I think it's, it's just, um, it's really impactful. And I think, I think it will resonate with people as well, because like Sam said, it's, I, there's definitely people who, you know, are on both sides of the coin there. And I think it's always beneficial for you to hear something that resonates with you, but also that is completely maybe on the opposite side of look like what you see about something or what you hear about something. And like, that would go for both sides, right? Like people who were in the church hearing that, but then at the same time, like someone who right now, like myself is outside of the church, you know, I would still want to be seeing things that are like from the church within the church, because like, I feel like I want to make sure that I have like a well-rounded, you know, perspective on things like that. Oh, totally understandable. I mean, having to be, be able to have the perspective from both sides of the argument, whether it's something like with this song, just both sides of the argument from being on the outside church, being from the inside church, whether it's politics, whether you're on one side or the other, or any, any other thing where it's like you can be on the one side or the other side, being able to have both perspectives of that and being mindful of that is going to help you out so much in terms of not only understanding what you think and what you feel, but being more compassionate and being more understanding about how other people think and feel and be able to have these conversations and have these dialogues around a topic like this without having it devolve into something of just spitefulness, hate, and just pretty much yelling at each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's really easy. Like, it's interesting because, like, you know, for a lot of my life, I was, I, you know, I would identify with a lot of, like, the, you know, I guess, like, politically conservative, whatever you want to call it, on, like, the right side of things, if you're going to put, like, a word behind it. And now, you know, I would say that I lean more towards, like, the left side of things. But it's, like, I also have to be conscious that I'm not just thinking the same way that I used to think on the right, now on the left, and just being, like, you know, like, having like a single mind or like a one track mind, like just trying to maintain a perspective of, of wanting to uh, hear both sides, see both sides and sort of uh, make the decision on, on how I feel about certain things for myself and not feel the, the need to be influenced by one or the other. Gotcha. Again, totally makes sense. All right. Or Josh or Antonio, whichever one you guys want to go next when it comes to hands of God, when it comes to the lyrics, what do you think about it when it comes to me? What do you think about it? Is there any way that you relate to it similar to what Sam had or what Sam had wrote and also what Sam had just said? Just something similar like that. You want to go, Josh? You want me to go? Go for it, buddy. Um, I guess I see it as more of like uh, the hypocritical perspective. So like in my life, in the same way I've grown up in a Christian home, um, just with very specific views and in a lot of ways, um, some of the people that have hurt me in my life have been like very religious people. And the people that have not shown me love have been those type of people in the past, not necessarily all of them, but um, it's uh, um, basically like, so it's, it's more like hypocrisy of like the typical Christians or like people that call themselves Christians and then judge other people for not being Christians is in a lot of ways kind of how I see it. And I actually don't really believe in like the word religion itself um, because I, I believe that religion is more of more about like division as opposed to like coming together. And it's not until I really dove into like the word of the Bible to where I actually found like Jesus himself and the love of the love of Jesus for who he is. And really he's like, he's just all about love and, and compassion. Um, and that's like just going about it, like in the simplistic way of, you know, what's, you know, what, what are morals, you know, what, what's, what's good and, and bad in this world. And, like, how do you love other people regardless of what they believe in, uh, regardless if they're left and right? Um, so that's kind of how I, I take this as like, um, it doesn't matter 
who you are or, or how you grew up. Um, it just, it just matters how you treat others. You treat others, how you like to be treated. And, um, a lot of people are very hypocritical and judgmental in a lot of ways. Uh, and they focus more on the rules as opposed to, you know, actually focusing on the, the, um, the love, love of Christ. So, um, so that's, that's kind of where, that's kind of where I'm at. I mean, as, as all of us in life, you know, I'm still trying to figure out a ton of stuff, um, like everybody is, but, um, yeah, it's, it's always an experience for sure. And, uh, I, I really appreciate, uh, Sam putting, putting his emotions into words. Uh, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of cool actually in a lot of ways. And, um, and a lot of it, I, I agree with, and, uh, it just, it's, it's also really good for conversation starters. So like how he said, like people ask him specifically, even well, the people that could understand what he's saying or make the effort into looking up what the actual lyrics are. They're like, Oh, so what, what do you mean exactly by this and by that? And, uh, that's what it's all about is starting conversations with people and being open-minded with people. Uh, it's, it's not about, you know, just thinking one way and shutting, shutting other people down. Uh, it's about just being open-minded, having those conversations, having those, those tough conversations with, with other people and asking questions like, okay, so why do you do this? Why do you think this way? Um, so that's kind of, that's kind of where I'm at with it. I see where you're at that. I, I totally understand a lot of that as well. Uh, again, I'm kind of what you're talking about just with how people take a lot of this stuff very literally and take this stuff very at like just whatever's written, like that's the way it is. And basically kind of falling into this sort of trap where it's whatever is said goes. And sometimes some of those things that are said and promoted by certain entities, and they could be, it could go pretty much for any organized religion that's out there where it kind of, again, it contradicts the basic principles of treating others the way you want to be treated and just being able to like, and like kind of pulling away from that while also still realizing the basic principle of that is again, treat others the way you want to be treated in order to deploy compassion, deploy empathy to so many other people that don't might not believe the same things you do, might not think the same way you do. But again, there's still people nonetheless. And we, why not show everyone respect based off of who they are and not, you know, what one thing that they believe or one thing that they, you know, might characterize them. Like look at the person as a whole and not just at the, as this one small microcosm based on one characteristic. Yeah, I feel like this world is full of more hate than ever and more division than ever. So it's it's a it's better it's a better time than than ever to have those type of conversations for sure. Oh, absolutely! All right, I got it because Josh is still the one that's left. I got to ask you kind of similar question, you know, around this as well. When it comes to the song "Hands of God," when it comes to the lyrical content, when it comes to the themes, and when it comes to the making of it. Is there any way that you specifically connect with it or what's your mindset around the whole entire song when you listen to it, you play it and you really get to, you know, fully feel the whole entire thing? Well, I think the, uh, the interesting takeaway for me just in this conversation here is you got four different dudes looking at the same piece of work and we're coming away looking at it at a slightly different angle each. Um, so I think it's cool to see each perspective. I wouldn't say any perspective is more right or more wrong. Cause I mean, a lot of, a lot of music, a lot of lyrics are, are meant to be subjective. Like how does that make you feel? How do you relate to it? How do you connect to, to that piece of work? For me, um, I, I have a similar perspective to the guys, um, but a slightly different take. Um, I, I'm coming from the, uh, the position of uh, someone who has a ministry degree, uh, who no longer works in ministry. Um, and that's not really for any particular reason other than 
I pursued other interests that I liked more and other interests that I, you know, I, I felt were a better calling for my life. But uh, coming at it from that perspective, someone who knows things from the inside, you know, you, you've seen how the sausage is made. Um, <laughs> Bad choice of words for the topic. <laughs> yeah. Well, <clears throat> I, I said what I said and I stand by it. Um, but you, you kind of get, get a little bit of an insider view of things when you're, you're working on the inside and I didn't do a ton of work. Um, but, uh, for me, like I, I think of it this way, people are shitty. Christians are people. You put two and two together. It's, you got a shitty Christian people. (laughs) <laughs> I'm not, I'm not trying to put anyone down or anything, but um, just because you say you're a Christian or you say you're this or that, or you believe one thing or another doesn't mean you always uh, act that out, especially uh, I think people in power. Uh, Cause a lot of times people who are abusers, uh, people who, uh, want to take advantage of other people, seek positions of power, often in the church, um, often in you know, the community, in, in politics too. But uh, with, with this song, um, I remember early on before we really had anything buttoned down and solid, I had the opportunity to provide a little bit of lyrical feedback and content And it's good to see how it turned out because I think Sam did a better job than I ever would have. Also also coming from the perspective of of a uh, past vocalist, um, Sam's way better than I ever was in many regards. Um, But uh, I I took a particular interest in this uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, Our... Uh, past guitar player Dave that Sam has stepped in for Um, he's the only one who I've really talked to about this before now but um, as a young adult uh, I was sexually abused by someone who I was doing ministry with so uh, when I when I first heard this song when we got some demos and I heard the lyrics I used to believe, but now my belief turns to dust at the feet of the altar, the altar of lust. I I can't even describe like how much I've (laughs) like how much relief I felt hearing those words outside of my own head. And then just the, I think the, the tone and the tempo and the, the way the song progresses, it just, um, I think it captures a lot of that. And like I said, we all come from different perspectives. Sam didn't know that writing that. And, um, but he nailed it. Like he nailed it dead on without, without knowing that beforehand. And that's, that's a testament to his writing ability and his his lyrics um i mean they cut deep and i i imagine there's going to be lots of people that have completely different perspectives than us both inside and outside the church that you know have faced abuse or uh, any number of other things you know at the hands of christians even even well-meaning christians because you know Sometimes we do things with the best intent, but the outcome isn't, isn't the greatest. But uh, I think that's where, we're, where we have to seek some grace and some understanding. So. My God, I, I kind of just want to let you roll on that because there was so much there from your story, especially coming from a completely different background than, you know, than Sam would come from or Sam would come from or Antonio would come from actually get, cause I'm, I don't know which way I'm pointing anymore. Cause I don't know how this video is going to end up being rendered when it's pull, fully out, but you're coming from a completely different perspective 
while fully feeling the impact and fully feeling the emotion from Sam's lyrics related to yourself and seeing that connection and being able to, you know, potentially give something more quantifiable in terms of an emotion that you experience with what you had gone through and actually being able to feel that and kind of grab grasp and understanding that, you know, there's other people out there that have gone through something like this and it kind of, it does it come, I got to ask questions. Does it come a little bit more as like a liberating feel to understand that there are other people out there that even that might didn't go what you went through. And it's unfortunate what you went through. I want to say, I'm sorry to, you know, hear that. And I'm, I'm glad that, you know, you were able to, get uh continue on with things that you are enjoying doing now but just being able to like connect with other like with what sam had written what sam had put down there with the lyrics with how his vocals are with how you guys put this song together to feel the impact of that statement it's a, does it give you some sense of like liberation from what you went through to really just kind of let kind of like not to say let go of those feelings but be able to understand and have a little bit more of a quantifiable thing to describe and help other people understand with yeah um i think like any kind of abuse any kind of trauma that people go through regardless of what it is i think it's it's something that you spend time processing and working through whether it's weeks months years for me it's been years um and i can i can sit here and say it without just bawling <laughs> so um i use if i ever did bring it up to someone I'd, I'd always say i'm okay don't worry and i would start crying and say it and it's it's all a process and it's something where when you talk to more people about it and you talk to people about your experiences and they share theirs um the the understanding that you're not alone sinks in it's it's cliche to say everyone says oh you're not alone you you're you hear it all the time and you know someone who's living in like a just a mental cycle of you know reliving that experience and not being able to break out of that you can't see the broader picture you can't see that there's other people out there that you know have lived through similar stuff and i think you know i think music is a big part of that you know where you get to share those experiences like I did with Sam and he didn't even, didn't even know. Um, and I, I think that's something that is going to resonate with a lot of fans. Um, I mean, I think too, there's probably some people that might not be so happy about these lyrics. They might think they're a little critical, but I, I think, you know, we're living proof that, people who are closest to the subject are the ones who, you know, should have the right, should have the voice to, to give some critique and some feedback and say, you know, some of this isn't right. Absolutely. I, I totally agree with you on that. And I do understand that there might be, you know, people that might come and say certain things about the song and might not like it be very critical of it based on the lyrical content. However, it's, it's something where, especially from the perspectives that all four of you have shared, it really does come through with people that have been in that, have been, you know, closest to the, the subject, been closest to the church and just been able to, you know, go through different events and really put this into a song and just really be, you know, point out, point out some things that are not right and point out some things that are, you know, happening that are, you know, not contradictory to the whole entire message and creating these potentially horrible situations that people have had to go through to bring out. Yeah. People are not going to like, because there are people that just, when it comes to the church and because when it comes to religion, politics, anything that people have such a close association with, if they still have that close association with it, they're going to be very protective of it. So with you guys having the perspective of, you know, you're being critical of it, but being able to still have this open mind and open dialogue to, if people want to have a conversation about it, you guys are open and willing to have that conversation that's going to create a whole different, you know, realm for you guys where it's not just we're being critical and that's it. It's we're being critical, but we want to, you know, talk about this. If we want to bring this stuff to life, but also 
connect with other people that have experienced this and people who haven't experienced this but are seen are on the other side of the uh, perspective of this want to be able to talk to them and see where their perspective comes in so they can understand where your perspective comes in and then you have this whole entire encompassing idea that you know we're just trying to gain perspective for everybody and then be able to especially when it comes like this potentially affect the change that needs to be made so that the stuff that's being brought up here, all the contradictory stuff, some of the grievances, some of the horrible things that happened, cease to happen and never happen again. Yeah. Hey, um, before we move on, I just want to say, Josh, um, we love you, man. Thanks for, I, I did, I had no idea that any of that happened and that's, Oh, you're good. That is heartbreaking to hear. And, um, I mean, thanks. Just thanks for telling us all that, man. That's something that, nobody could ever understand and we 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 love you man we love you a lot yeah thank you really appreciate did, hearing that. yeah i didn't mean to drop a bomb on you or anything uh, but i mean it's it's the topic we're talking about it's real it's life i mean life is shitty but you know we're here we're li- we're living it we're moving on yeah. Once again, Josh, I have to echo the sentiments of Sam as well. Thank you for sharing that as well, because if, if people that are listening to this podcast, if they've gone through a similar situation to that, hopefully it you know gives them some more strength and some more understanding to what had gone on to them and helps them to start to move past some of that trauma, whether it's whether, like you said, whether it's days, months, years down the line, helps them get past that, helps them work through that. I wouldn't say get past, but work through that and really get through those emotions and become more understanding of what had happened, more understanding the impact on them and potential ways that, you know, I, I'm trying to think of some, you know, other positive thing to say, but I'm don't really know where to go from there. Honestly. Yeah. Sometimes there's not a lot to say, you know, sometimes you just got to let the, the process speak for itself. That I think that's a good way to put it, Sam. So thank you for that. <laughs> And like I was gonna say, for like for Maya, when it comes to like the song, when I was going through the whole entire thing, the thing that I picked up it was, I thought it was like more dealing with the problem of not just really, but specifically organized religion that has how the problem that it has caused humanity and how it created this sense of potential moral superiority amongst people that follow the teachings of an organized. I'm gonna be very specific on organized religion against those that either don't follow any organized religion or ones that follow a different faith. Especially with watching the music video showing people in a church with blindfolds over their eyes, seemingly showing that they're like content to just follow along with whatever the church says and dictates them. It's scary in a way because they tend to be the ones that are more judgmental to others. Potential is, and I put out an example of people in the LGBTQ plus community, discriminatory towards other like other people in organized religions, other religions as well, their faith, and hateful towards others. I mean, we saw that in, in all throughout history, especially with these different holy wars. It's not nece- it's not a condemnation of the basic principles, which are to be a good person and treat others the way you want to be treated, like Antonio said with Jesus, especially with the teams of just be- of love and just love, compassion. But it's more of a condemnation towards the organized group influencing people to hate or dislike others based on something that is not of that person's characters and the repercussions of that that have happened. Yeah, man. Yeah. Like, I mean, like Josh, Josh put it as good as you can put it. People are shitty and Christians are people and you just do the math there, but there there's, I mean, there's people that are Christians that are, that are amazing people. And you know what I mean? And they're, they'll really hear you out. I mean, we have an example right here. Like Antonio has a a beautiful relationship, you know, with his faith and he is a, you know, a walking, um, I don't know. We, we just get to see him lead by example in the way that he does. And, you know, we love him to death. And of course he's not the people we're singing about. Um, but yeah, yeah. I hear what you're saying, Kevin. Yeah. And I mean, for, for me, that comes from a background of, again, growing up and being in, you know, that whole entire idea, a whole entire faith since I was, you know, basically, especially through school and everything since I was like three years old. And then as time went on and pretty much once I got out of high school, it was like kind of, I, I was just away from it, basically completely just went away from it, did my own thing. And not, and I'm not going to even for myself as well. I found myself to be a better, happier person and more respectful game, more perspective of others 
as I've gone away from that than when I was towards it. However, that could also, again, for if people that are in that, I, I'm going to just say this is like another thing as well. That could also be a thing of me, you know, growing up game perspective because that was shoot nine years ago already. And I've gone through so many different things in life over the past nine years where, yeah, I've gained different perspectives on things, but I'm not necessarily sure I would have gained some of those perspectives had I been closely associated with something like that. Yeah. Yeah. You bring a lot of, a lot of valuable, you know, input to the table and I'm glad you can relate to the song at least a little bit. And what you were saying about the video, yeah, the, the blindfolds, all that stuff, that a lot was us, like Josh gave a whole bunch of really good input on the imagery. And then we worked with, I don't know if you know, Eric DiCarlo from Square Up Studios. He does a ton of music videos across like the metalcore, hardcore, deathcore scene. And he really did a great job of making that come to life in this uh, this space we have here in Pittsburgh. Um, and uh, yeah, just shout out to, to Eric for just being a really good director and helping us like achieve our vision with the video without like really crossing any lines. Cause it is, a, it's a touchy sh- subject and you can kind of make the imagery like whatever you want. But even like, hearing what you said with the blindfolds going on, it's people willingly like, you know, closing their eyes to things going on. But it's also like, you, that's a great perspective. I could see someone else taking the perspective of, you know, that person's being handed the blindfold. That person is being blindfolded by whoever's in, you know, whoever the power figure is in the video. Um, so I think when people see it, there'll be a whole bunch of different reactions and, and different ways to uh, think about it. And I think what you said is very valuable because that might reflect a little bit of what you've seen in your life. So yeah, thanks for that input. Oh, and you're shout good. out Eric DiCarlo. Yep. Shout out Eric, because when watching that video, the, the video took a whole, like took the song to a whole nother level as well. And with the way the video was put again, shout out to Eric DiCarlo, just because the way the video was done, it it had more of this, you know, it had more of like a flowing feel, the, the color scheme that was used in everything as well, really put out such a strong connection, especially to the church, like if you like you walk into a church, you know, of, of the Christian faith and you look at that, like kind of the, the setting that you guys had, the colors, everything that was around there, just, you know, the way that everyone was dressed and even like the blindfolds, the color in them as well. Everything fits so well into that whole entire, you know, you kind of, you literally felt like you were right there. And then just how this whole entire song and how the whole entire flow of the video had more of this melodic progression throughout it, especially the way I looked at it it showed so much more of this powerful thing there where nothing felt like nothing felt like it was rushed, especially, you know, when you're, you're displaying this message, you're displaying this topic and you're displaying what you're trying to display through your lyrics, through your instrumentals and everything. When you're connecting it with the video, having this more melodic flow throughout the whole entire thing doesn't rush anybody to certain conclusions, doesn't rush anybody to certain judgments too quickly or just kind of cuts people up. It it literally lets you flow throughout the whole entire song. So you had taken the whole entire thing and then by the time it's over, when you're ready to, you know, make your opinion, make your judgment, whatever it is, you've gone through the whole thing. So you're not missing out on, you know, you're not, you're just cutting it short and missing out on a whole different part of the song or a whole different part of the video. There's a whole story there and the whole flow of it really makes sense. And it's so congruent that you don't want to stop it. You want to see where the whole entire thing goes. Absolutely. I'm glad you had that reaction to it. I don't know if anybody else has a, uh, an experience and a reaction to the video. I know we tried to get Sam out for that video and the freaking COVID thing, uh, you know, it keeps you from, keeps you from pulling things together. So that was going to be our big reveal, but unfortunately we couldn't get his beautiful, beautiful face in the video. So close, but. Could have photoshopped me in, in the background, but. <laughs> yeah. I bought a whole bunch of baby oil and we didn't even get to use it. We were going to lather you up. <laughs> Undo a few buttons and get you real greasy. <laughs> I mean, you got to play up the Italian stereotype. That's true. That's true. Greasing everything back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Played a spaghetti in the background. <laughs> Antonio is drumming and he's just like eating on the spaghetti. Mm. <laughs> and you know how like they do that thing where drummers will put like water on the on the snare drum or like or powder or something <laughs> so when they hit it but we got to do it with like ragu or something and then he just like hits and just like red <laughs> fucking just like marinara into the into the game. marinara oh uh, it was a little bit awesome next time next time next music video we'll get it done yeah first i gotta find a drum set to do that with ah <laughs> uh, it'll be fine you can change the heads we'll, we'll get you we'll get you yeah it goes I, off just uh just, just give me a snare drum and a stick, and I'll sit in a bathtub with pasta. How about that? <laughs> you can get breadsticks, Olive Garden breadstick, breadsticks as your 
Dre, Dre, oh my Ooh. god, drumsticks. Red Snake says drumsticks. I like that. <laughs> Let's say, but to make something like that work, like take take an actual drumstick and stick it through the bread stick. So like when you actually when you still hit the drum though, like it the sound actually hits and the force actually hits. Because I mean, if you're just hitting with a bread stick, it's gonna sound like a limp noodle, just like. <laughs> Like, and nothing's gonna come off the drum. Oh, if you want that, if you, if you want that regular pop, that you gotta have that sound. stick. Yeah, you know, I mean, if you if you guys come up with somewhere, all of a sudden, you know, you play a live show and you have to use Olive Garden breadsticks for your set to accurately drum. That you don't know how, that could go a really really long way. Plus, then you get to throw Olive Garden breadsticks into the crowd. Who's gonna say no to a breadstick? I would eat, I would eat all of them first. They'd, they'd be all gone. <laughs> <laughs> there's no chance <laughs> they last I ate like 10 of those in one sitting well, those things are oh so good let's guzzle them babies down <laughs> well, we're gonna so need, many carbs say so we're going to need 20 of those breadsticks then at least because well 10 for you to eat and then 10 for just the drumming because gotta have you know your drumsticks have your backups and then have your backups to your backups when it comes to the breadsticks there we go. This has really taken an intellectual turn, hasn't it? <laughs> yes, yes, it has, and I'm, I'm, it, you know, especially after everything we talked about, it just kind of just all of a sudden somehow transitioning over to breadsticks. <laughs> just makes sense. It's, for it's Josh's fault. It's true, he did like the he did bring right. up bring up the uh, pasta. I don't I had recall. Pasta, I had pasta for dinner, man. I don't recall. <laughs> You had pasta for breakfast, so shut up. <laughs> I mean, shut up. Hey. Pasta olio, olio, baby. Uh, Say, but one thing I do want to also talk about, jumping back to Hands of God as well, is especially when it comes to the whole entire construction of the song, just from the intro, the intro was something that really stood out to me for something of an absolute positive. And I'm looking at my notes here because, I mean, I went as deep in the song as I possibly could to fully get a whole grasp of it. And I looked at like, you know, the intro, it starts out with a single guitar riff that builds up in volume to really open up the song and take us in the verses. But if you listen to the intro riff, I, I looked at it and I listened to it and I thought it was very closely inspired by the Doomsday riff from Architects. And there's nothing wrong with being inspired by that riff for this song here because it takes the listeners, like someone like myself, into, you know, this more mindfulness that this topic is and it's something that is bigger than them. And has to be ingrained in humanity for quite a long time. It takes more of this full mindful approach because listen to Doomsday by Architects and just how deep that song really gets to the core of what Architects was talking about in the album with Holy Hell, losing Tom Cyril and trying to figure out how they were going to go forward and really grieving through that process. It took so, like that riff brings such a heavy emotional impact and having a riff that, you know, when I listen to it, it sounded like it was inspired by it, just really took this whole entire idea and really put it forward and the emotion of the song forward right then and there. So when it comes to really experiencing that right from the get-go, it hits right then and there. Yeah, man, it's interesting that you say that about Architects. I mean, we, we've we listened to Architects, you know, for years and years and years. And uh, we I think we play in a similar tuning. I don't know how many tunings they play in, but definitely that uh, the record before Holy Hell. Oh, God, somebody help me out. Oh, uh, the... Uh... All our gods have abandoned us. That one. Yeah, all our gods have abandoned us. Dang, that's really sad that I couldn't remember that. <laughs> but that a lot of that album was uh, written and dropped F sharp, and we heard that we were like, "That's it. That's what we're gonna play for the rest of our lives." So, yeah, the the low like tapping part, the real intricate stuff, and just letting it hit as hard as possible, flopping them strings around. That's I mean, that's the kind of the approach we took. So yeah, I guess in a, in a way, we did take a lot of. Uh, a lot of inspiration from architects. So that's really interesting that you can hear it. I don't know, you know, if we can ever get to the doomsday level, because that, man, that stuff rocks your world. But what, I appreciate the great, compliment. What a great album that was, man. That's all That's all Doug listened. I mean, I can't speak for Doug. Well, I guess we can, but since he's not here, <laughs> but that's that's all he listened to. He, he was like, let me let me send you the my top 100 songs by architects. And... Uh, <laughs> He's the one that got me into them, and that's that's probably my favorite album from them for sure. For for me, that's my favorite album from them, based on the fact that I really didn't give a, I didn't really care for anything with like unclean vocals, metalcore, anything of that at all. When I really started listening to like trying to get into some of the stuff, getting with the podcast as well, but all of a sudden, like I listened to Holy Hell by Architects, 
And there was just like, if, if this was the moment where like the door was open to the whole entire concept because I, hearing Sam Carter's unclean vocals, hearing how everything was put together and just figuring, just understanding, you know, the whole album is them going through the grieving process between Tom Cyril and seeing how they're going to go forward from that. Understanding that and just feeling that and seeing how the vocals were really showing all that emotion. I'm like, oh shit, like there's more here than I ever thought there was. So it really opened the door for me to like jump into metalcore and then it took one song from Motionless and White to be like, fuck it, I'm in. But it all opened up from that, you know, just the understanding of how everything was constructed in that album through song by song from Architects Holy Hell. So whenever I kind of see, hear something that, you know, not, I'm not going to say sounds like it, but hits as impactfully emotionally as that and uses uh, inspired sound to really just pull out the emotion of a certain song, a certain topic, whatever it is. I always have a soft spot for it because that's how it got me into this whole entire thing. So again, listening to Hands Got, and when that opens up with that riff that just is inspired, it feels like it's inspired by Doomsday. Again, it just puts me this whole entire mindfulness feel that there's going to be an, you know, something very heavy that's going to be talked about, but it's something that, you know, is rather pertinent that you're going to have to listen. You're going to want to listen to all the way through. And that riff just opens up the whole entire emotional just mindset for you right then and there. It's one of the coolest things ever. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's it's cool that you can identify, you know, when something important is going to be talked about. And it's really interesting to hear that that's how you got into metalcore, because I mean, that's basically that as good as it gets right there. So that's cool. A lot of us. I mean, I know, Josh, Josh, you got like the early, early days of metalcore and the scene was way different back then. I don't even know if Architects was big. That was back in like the Tony Danda days. Right. Yeah, I mean, I'm super old. <laughs> if that's what yeah, you're getting all at. that to say, Josh is just the wrinkliest boy yeah. in the band. Mm, like a prune. I was actually just I when you were I was curious when you mentioned architects, because I know they've been around for a while, but I'm just literally looking at their discography right now on Spotify. And uh Dooms the the album, Holy Hell, is their eighth studio album. And they've released like two since like they have a shit ton of music yeah because i did for those that wish to exist i think that was february of last year was that when that came out mm -hmm. oh, looks like it and that ended up going like number one in the uk for like three straight weeks or something like that it's just like for me i'm like looking i'm like was it my favorite album by architects no am i gonna bash it because it because it's you know it's not my favorite nah because look at what the look at what the fuck it did it got went number one in uk for three straight weeks shows that you know metalcore is not dead and that people are still yearning for something like this. And then you're seeing what the hell Bring Me the Horizon is doing right now with all the crap they're doing. I mean, they're not, they're, they're just Bring Me the Horizon. You can't put them in a genre anymore. I'm just like, there's stuff I like that they're doing. There's stuff I don't like they're doing. But whatever I don't like they're doing, like, they're just taking this sound and, like, putting more people onto it. So I'm just going to say, let it happen. Let it roll. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you saw, but I think it was today they dropped the collab with Ed Sheeran. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> what? Yeah, they they remixed Bad Habits and the bands in the background and Ollie singing. Yeah, it's nuts. Ollie singing and then screams at the end. That's wild. Oh, I see that. Oh, I gotta check that out, man. I didn't hear about that. Because for me, it's like the, the song Bad Habits. I had shared, like I really don't care for the song. So like listening through like kind of how they put it together, I'm like, yeah, it's not really my thing. Am I gonna be like, oh, this is bad? I'm just looking I'm like, nope. I'm just gonna let this roll. Especially because I'm like, is there any point I can like for me I can latch onto? Oh, of course the ending when all of a sudden you know you're getting this whole entire like pop you know feel remix with the band behind it, and then here comes Ollie just putting in the unclean vocals. I'm like, yeah, let's go. Wow, that's cool. So with stuff that's going on there, I mean, again, like the success that Architects ended up having in 2021, what Bring Me the Rise is doing right now. More people might, more people are starting to get into the heavier side of music more because it's getting more exposure as well. And especially with you guys coming out with an EP that goes this deep, especially with a track like Hands of God that goes this deep into things. There's a lot of potential here for this to be the EP and the moment for a moment in Pompeii to really just take hold of, you know, the future that you guys can potentially have, the success you guys are deserving to have and just grab it and get it. We'll probably honestly be collabing with Ed Sheeran by the end of 2022. Yeah, I was I was just texting him. I was going to oh, call him a few favors. Cool. Man, do you have his number? Because I've just been texting yeah. random numbers, hoping it's Ed Sheeran this whole time. <laughs> just collab question mark. 
Like, what? Yeah, I got Alanis Morissette, but I think that's a little too niche for us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if, if Bring Me the Horizon can do Ed Sheeran, you guys can do Alanis Morissette. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. Because if you don't, well, then I'm going to be like, well, what the heck, man? Like, I don't, I don't get it. What the hell? <laughs> it yeah. would work. <laughs> Well, even even like kind of like going into like some more like with hands guys, well, specifically Sam with your vocals as well, because I was looking at you know specifically when it comes to like the first verse that you had, because I'm looking at my notes again. I put it like has a little more of this melodic pattern over the faster backing instrumentals, but your vocals honestly remind because they were heavier in this in this part of the song as well. They kind of remind me of like this deathcore inspired Sam Carter sound. So I'm like, if Sam Carter went deathcore, like this is kind of like where I'm like relating it to, which kind of blew my mind, especially with you know me relating the stuff like the intro riffs, like Doomsday from Architects, just like how this all puts together. I was like, what you're able to do with the vocal here is like bring this heavier, more deathcorey growl to the first half, but then get a little more of this like higher pitch gutting sound over the top with some pitch, but less clarity in the words, but more emotion in the overall tone. And we're feeling that the, that pain fully felt right here in us. There's anger, destruction brought on by this pain that you're being felt, all based on a group of people thinking they have the moral authority over another. Like you're feeling that pain and you're feeling that through the tone of the vocals when you're not necessarily potentially fully able to understand the lyrics at that point with how heavy the le- la- the sound goes. So even when that sound t- potentially goes heavy and the lyrics and the words get a little bit distorted from the average listener, the sound and the f- emotional feel from that just amps up to a whole nother level. So you're still hitting just as impactfully with your vocal when you're doing something like that. Mm. Wow. That's crazy to hear that you can hear emotion in my voice because I remember back to when I had like emo swished hair across my face and I was like coughing up blood after trying to scream like suicide season. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> so long ago, like I, I was like, I'm never going to be able to do this stuff. And like somehow I'm here and you're telling me that my voice is, conveying emotion that's crazy um i don't know that i could ever compare myself to sam carter but i do definitely have some like deathcore influences in my in like the way i i came up you know as a vocalist like a lot of like old chelsea grin as maybe cringy as that is i don't know i still like it <laughs> um you know die art is murder all that stuff like that's that's heavy through my repertoire you know all through high school and everything so that's what i learned and then uh, and then actually the the kind of semi pitch stuff in the chorus comes from, yeah, Sam Carter, you know, he perfected it, uh, but also Marcus from North Lane on the alien record that they just put out. Oh, well, I guess it was like two or three years ago. Now he just has this shrill, like singing, screaming over the top. And I was like, I want to be able to do that. And I didn't even come close, but we kept it in. So Dude, that's, that's where we ended up. I remember recording that with you. Cause that's, that's a really hard thing to do, first of all, because not only are you like doing your, your vocal fry thing, but you're also having to like hit pitch and to like do those things both at the same time is like very difficult. And the funniest thing is like we both we both like uh, discovered this. So like like it we're get, I'm getting nerdy at this point, but like basically like when 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 we were recording in logic and like you know, like if you've ever like worked on like, or done like, like simple pitch correction or something like that, like, which is like something that like logic offers, like that, like that, like the way that the voice is like, it doesn't even recognize it as pitch. So like, you can't even like pitch correct, like a scream like that, because it just doesn't hear like any like notality to it. That's not even a word, but either way, I mean, I think Sam, I think you, you, you got it. And I think it sounds really cool in the song, but it was just interesting how, like we kind of like layered it with a, with a lot of different stuff too. I remember like when we were when we were going through the recording process with that. Yeah, when in doubt, the secret is just layer more stuff on top, <laughs> bury it deep, and maybe somebody will notice it. So I'm glad you picked up on it. Oh man, dude! So modern metal production now, though, like the amount of layering, the amount of like distortion added to like people's vocals, like there's you're never just hearing like one person's vocal take by itself like you're hearing you're hearing two in the center you're hearing five or like six on either side that are all like different like you got like your low and then your high and then your mid high like there's so much like complexity and layering that goes into like a, a really impactful vocal performance 
Yeah, man. Yeah. I know. I know, Kevin, you had um, Fit for an Autopsy on here. I mean, their singer has that crazy singing thing that he yeah. does, too. You know what I mean? And that dude, I mean, there's so many people out there that are just so influential in the scene. Um, and yeah, they, you know, hopefully one day we'll get to a point where we're like, we influence somebody. But for right now, it's just all trickling down to us. You know what I mean? Yeah. But as you continue to work and you continue to build up, I mean, you guys have a chance to get to that point where people are going to be influenced by you as well. I mean, take a look at just take a look at I'll use one example from 2021. Someone who's probably influenced by so many people, but then in one song, all of a sudden now people are being influenced by him and what he did. And that's with Will Ramos from Lorna Shore with To the Hellfire. Just from that nasty breakdown, how many people are going to be influenced by what he did on that? Like it takes one insane performance or it ta- and, and that, it's all it could possibly take. But, but continue to build up on that as well because as you guys do build, especially with your instrumental styles, with your vocal performances, with how you're writing these songs, with how everything is being mixed – there is so much potential, especially with how you know fantastic the mixing and the production is getting behind a lot of these songs. Could just it, it could be one thing, or it could be just a consistent build up of a lot of different things to get to that point where you know people are making music in the year 2027, 2028, and they're referencing this EP by a moment in Pompeii. Man, that's those are some brave words. <laughs> man, I, I don't know about that. Oh, man, talking about Will Ramos, man, that dude is a beast. And we played with we played with his old band a whole bunch. Well, not his old, old band, but we played with Monument of a Memory a couple of times. I don't know if you remember that, Antonio and Josh, but they came yeah. here. We've been out in Philly and played yeah. with them. And man, he's I mean, Will's just been a beast through and through. And he's done. I mean, he did Deathcore like back in the day, back before that. So it's cool to see him get his chance to shine and just demolish it. And I. Shout out to Eric DiCarlo again. He did the video, you know, that blew that, that blew that, you know, one single up by Lorna Shore. He did the To the Hellfire video? Uh, I mean, I'm going to have to look up which one he did. He did the one that had so much fire. So, I mean, that one. That, that has to be To the Hellfire because that one had so much fire. And that was the one with the Will Ramos pig scream, which is just like, oh. how the fuck does a person actually do that? And then you see him do like the one take vocal performance and you hear him just do it himself. It's just like. Okay, there's a little layering on top of that, of course, for the you know the production single for oh. you know the releasing. Of course there is. But then you listen to what he act, and actually it's just like Jesus yeah. Christ, man. Yeah, dude. The first time I remember watching that, I was like on TikTok or something. And I like I don't know, I like I just found it and dude, when I when he started doing like the thing, I was like, Jesus Christ. I'm about to like I'm like on the I'm like shitting on the toilet and I'm I like I got up and I was like, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely the most brutal breakdown I've ever heard okay. in my entire life. That one. Far. There's another one that I also, I think, found on, maybe it came up on TikTok or something, but it's some, what, is the band called Demolisher? Or like, I don't know what it was called. It's like this, like, he has this, like, part where he, like, speaks in Russian. Oh, you're talking about Demolisher by Slaughter to Prevail. Yes, that. That's, I think that's an older song. I mean, older. Uh, that came out in 2021. Okay, wait, really? <laughs> yeah, it was off the, it was off their album in 2021. It also had the song Baba Yaga on it where he speaks ru- just goes crazy in Russian. It's just like oh, holy shit, man. That core is fucking great. Dude, that was wild. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so you said demolisher and then started spe- saying Russian. I'm like, I know exactly where you're going with this, man. And, uh, have they maybe like have they done have they been around for a while? They've been I don't know how long they've been around for. I I don't think they've been around like super duper long, maybe like eight, nine years. Okay. It's interesting. Yeah, I, I just remember hearing that and I was like, well, I was like, I, I was like, I know it's hard to understand people when they scream, but that's not English. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, that is straight Russian right there. He, he's uttering like he's speaking in tongues or some shit with that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but shit's like, I mean, like, I'll hear stuff like that, too. It's just like, okay, that'll go on my, not on my, like, actual gym playlist. It'll go on my warm-up playlist. It's like, okay, getting ready, you know, get ready to hit the gym already. Let's listen to some Lorna Shore, let's listen to Slaughter Prevail, and let's just have some fun. Because all of a sudden, walk into the gym, and all of a sudden, someone says, what are you listening to? And I pop in my earbuds, and all of a sudden, you just hear the the pig squeal in there. It's like, <laughs> yep, that's what's happening. What are you listening to? Death. Just death. <laughs> 
<laughs> listen to a listen to a slaughterhouse soundtrack at this one. So watching people's reactions though to that song is like the best thing ever. Oh, like yeah. <laughs> it is the best. People who like aren't into metal too. Like people like right. like like showing like your like mom that or something like that. <laughs> She'd be like, "What is this?" Or if you ever see the ones with, like the it's like the vocal coach or like music teacher reacts to, to oh, the hell yeah. by Lord of Shore, and it's like they get to the point the pig squeal, and you see the looks on their faces, and it's it's not something of like this is horrible. It's they're trying to comprehend that an actual human made this sound. Yeah, I always like watching those because like. They're, they don't they don't just like immediately write it off because it's like screamo music like they're a vocal coach and they like understand like physiologically what that person has to do to do that and they understand that's the other thing too is like people who don't listen to screamo or like metal or whatever just listen to it and they're like ah they're just yelling like how do they not destroy it and like they don't understand that it's like a physiological thing that is different from just yelling which sounds like condescending but it is like very different and it's just like always cool to see people who like recognize that that's like a skill and a talent and something that you can't like you need to work on and that you don't just like get to do out of nowhere. So that's why I like watching like the vocal coaches because they like understand that. I gotta keep. I gotta stop doing this. <laughs> Please keep doing. It. Keep going. It. And then they like they're like oh like and they'll stop the video and be like oh he's doing this or whatever and they're like wow that's really crazy. Yeah, yeah. my my sister is well she's into linguistics she's teaching english in korea right now um when i was a vocalist you know she would explain like the things i'm doing i'm like yeah you're right like i am it, it's it's all about like the mechanics of speech mm-hmm. um and even like having a kid and watching them learn how to speak certain sounds are made certain ways with your tongue with the front back your mouth behind your teeth and, you know, for kids, it's easier to say certain things like dada, because it's just physically easier to do. Yeah. And then when you're like, all right, I want to sound like 15 corpses going through a grinder and just coming out of my mouth. Yeah. And you're like, okay, now how do I do that? Do I put my tongue here and then just kind of like start in the back of the throat and then just let it like, yeah. So it's, it's. For the people that know the uh, the way that all that works with speech, mm-hmm. like it's it's crazy how how that all plays together, and um, you know ends up making some of the weirdest sounds you'll ever hear. Yeah, that's actually how Sam um, warms up whenever we, we we do vocal sessions. He says, "All right, I'm gonna I want to make my tongue do this thing," and I help him out usually. I help him with his tongue um by like we'll touch tongues generally just to like figure out like how things like warm up and then we'll like maybe like kiss and uh <laughs> things usually just kind of like take off from there. yeah you got to keep you got to keep the muscles loose yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. It's, i can say it's really i mean it's very very helpful to me and uh and, you know, all that's going on while like some soft like hooked on phonics dvds are going on in the background <laughs> really helps <laughs> man that's how i warm up for drums it's the same way a lot of love a lot of love a lot of love and a lot of hook down phonics mm. well, that's a winning combination my friends hey, it worked for me is that product placement i don't know i don't know i, I hope hook down phonics sponsors the podcast but if not you know what is hook down yeah. phonics still a thing does that exist still I'm looking it, sh- it up right now. It should. I I mean, I, I hope we made enough. I mean, people have made about enough jokes about it. Or if, if it's just something that's still, you know, living back in the night, like 70s, 80s, 90s, we're bringing it back. Oh, man, yeah. dude. Subscriptions.hookedonphonics.com is up, and it looks like it's was designed in 1994. Yes. Yes. Probably, honestly, this is probably the original website. <laughs> All right, I got to take a look at this. Why is it is this hooked on phonics? <laughs> oh, okay, wait. All right, no, the site the site itself actually looks okay. It was like some weird link, but yeah, it's still a thing. Hooked on phonics. Uh, is yeah. that like <laughs> Russian hooked on phonics? <laughs> <laughs> Never heard of it. It's uh, a slaughtered prevail version of hooked on phonics. Yes. Hey, <laughs> Sam, I got I got some I got a Russian lesson for you. Bolshazopa. <laughs> 
Uh, what does that mean? <laughs> it means you got a fat ass. <laughs> like, real nice. Like, I like it. It's the only Russian I know. That's good. That's good. Usually people go for where's the bathroom, that'll, but I think that one's a little bit more functional. That'll probably get, that, that'll probably get you further. <laughs> that'll get you places in Russia. That might actually get you. Um, if you go to Russia, it might get you more places than just yelling out, I'm the machine. You might have a better story <laughs> than Burke Kreischer by the end of it. Yeah. Huh? Ah. <laughs> well, guys, one thing I always like to do, like close to the end of these podcasts and like is what, especially when you're talking about hands of God as well is to really give like this overall synopsis of the song, especially from my perspective to kind of also give the listeners, the podcast, just like a, Oh, should I check out this? And like, what's one thing like take away from this if I did a press release style. So when it comes to hands, God, I put a down for this overall, this song took me by surprise in a good way. Using the topic the band did, I was not surprised to hear that Doomsday inspired riff to open this up because it hits on more of a personal emotional subject and the subject of organized religion and the thought of moral superiority is perfect for the use of it. Using that riff with faster backing in the verses to allow Sam to really take his unclean vocals and show both lower and higher pitches to show the struggle we go through when the church blinds people on the specifics and how we feel trying to be the best that we can without being tied to a specific set of ideals. I love how the pre-chorus drops soft to give us this feeling of exhaustive pain that the clean, depressed vocals and piano really add to this more emotional toll. And then to the chorus on Queens, making us feel the pain and the feeling of moral superiority being that the world has been caused by from these different uh, things that organized religion has put on us. But once that bridge takes us into the breakdown, I'm absolutely hooked. The guttural inspired unclean show the pain once again, but the pain with influence to break away and the bleh, is the cherry on top of the Sunday that is this song. Wait, where was there a blight in the song? Oh, I think he's talking about the last, like when the breakdown slows down at the end. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just that is a, that's a really good synopsis and very nice. And I would just recommend putting at the end, just kidding. They suck so bad. <laughs> I'll let you put that in yourself, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Sam's going to ask you to, to print that. He's going to frame that that whole synopsis like uh, right above his bed. I'm working on a quilt right now. I'm you knitting. Do a cross it. stitch? Quilt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm going to sleep with that on my body for the rest of my life. No, what we're going to do is we're going to get him like a super large banner that he's going to put in his yard. Just going to have all that on there in one long stretch. So it's going to have to cover like, you know, three whole city blocks. So as you're driving down, you got to slow down. You're going to read the whole entire thing as you drive by. Will it create a huge traffic jam? I really don't give a shit. Worth it. But people are going to find out about it. Worth it. Either that I like or, your passion. Yeah, yeah, me too. Either that or a themed Snuggie would be nice. Hands of God themed snuggie. <laughs> Ooh, a two person snuggie. Ooh, with a butt flap. Well, there's no back to those things, anyways. So it's kind of like free. <laughs> well, it's the a... Wild West back there. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like the snuggie is like the mullet of blankets, business up front, party in the back. Yeah. Never thought of it like that. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wait, but it's the opposite because there's nothing in the back. So it's. It's, <laughs> exactly the party's in the back because there's nothing there to prevent right. it from happening right you're right it is wow i, never I mean what what happens if you got like a like a tuxedo snuggie or like a suit snuggie with like a suit and tie and everything in the back it's just wide open now it's business yeah. up front party in the back what what, you what you're talking about is actually a uh like a sweat suit that's a suit in like sweatpants and sweatshirt it's called the swoot is that a real thing it could be yours for only twenty nine ninety five for the shipping and handling. <laughs> well, guys, as we bring this podcast to its conclusion, one thing I always like to do is give you guys a chance to say whatever you want to say, plug whatever you want to plug, promote whatever you want to promote at the end of the podcast. So, gentlemen, the floor is yours. Uh, well, yeah. Um, well, I hope everybody wants to check out the song. Uh, it's coming out March eleventh. Uh, it's going to premiere on BVTV's uh, uh, YouTube channel um, at noon on the West Coast and three o'clock on the East Coast. So uh, check it out there. And then just a couple weeks later on April Fool's Day, April 1st, um, we're dropping the whole EP. So uh, check it out on any streaming service and uh, we hope you enjoy it. 
That's Heck nice. yeah. Nicely said. So then on that note, I can end this podcast by saying three very specific things. So first thing is first. After listening to this podcast, or everyone listening, yeah, you're going to want to check out this band, A Moment in Pompeii, if you don't know about them already. If you know about them, you're already ahead of everybody else, so, woo, hell yeah. If you don't, that's fine. This is the perfect time to get into them, so best thing you do is follow them on all their socials and get ready for the release of Hands of God on March 11th and the release of the EP, Longing for Substance, on April 1st. So best way to do it is, you know, follow them with their socials, be able to check out everything they have on YouTube, and be ready for that when that music video drops to go check it out and stream their stuff, download their stuff, buy their stuff, all that good kind of stuff. But you're going to want to be able to find a place to look all that stuff up so it's easy, you know, click here and just it's going to take you to each site. Just like, you know, you're going to be like them on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all stuff, follow them on, you know, Spotify, subscribe to their stuff, all that kind of stuff. Wouldn't you like me to just put that all in the description of the podcast, all the links, all the labels, and just make it as easy as possible for you to find a moment in Pompeii and listen to Hands of God and listen to the EP Longing for Substance when it comes out? Because you're damn right I'm going to do that. So, take a look at the description of the podcast. If you want to get into a moment in Pompeii, scratch that. You will get into a moment in Pompeii. All the links are there for you to follow along with them and become a fan like you should be. And now time for number two, guys. So whatever I've guessed in the podcast that I have absolutely enjoyed having the podcast, like super enjoyed, like I would love to just like continue to do this. I would like to make a certain promise. And this promise has been hit on, I want to say 100% of the time. And by God, you guys are not breaking this streak. So my promise does not start with if. Because if implies the possibility that this ain't going to happen, and yeah, I don't really like that. So this starts with a when, because it implies, yeah, this is going to happen. Time frame, though, that's still to be determined. So my promise is when I get to see you guys perform live for the first time, because it's going to happen, my promise to all you guys is this, and that is, first round's on me. On you. Let's go. Like, literally on you, because I wouldn't be my first body shot. You need a clarification. I mean, if, if if that's what you know floats your boat, man, then we can do that. Otherwise, you know, get you what beer, mixed drink, whatever it is. Just but you don't have to, you know, drink it out of my belly button. I'd like um, to. Ooh, four locos all around. <laughs> oh, boy, I haven't had one of those in a while, but we'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make it happen. Well, thanks, Kevin. We appreciate it. Second rounds on uh Sam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <I'm done>. <laughs> <laughs> Doug, the ugliest member of the band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll make second run on Doug because you know he's not here. That, that that's his punishment. That's his punishment. <laughs> so, guys, yeah. bringing this podcast to a close, I cannot end this in all good conscience with a goodbye for a number of things. One, I mean, after hearing Hands of God, I'm looking so forward to longing for substance to come out. So, when it comes to gaining a fan, yeah, you did right here. So. I'm going to be, make sure I follow along with you guys, follow along with everything you guys are doing. And whether I get to see you and make good of my promise first or bring you back on the podcast again, because I'd absolutely love to talk to you guys in the future. Once again, bring you back on the podcast. Have a great time. Whatever happens first, I'll be seeing you then. So this ain't goodbye. Fuck no, it's not goodbye. This is. See you later. Thanks, Kevin. See you yeah, later, thanks. Kevin. See you. Thanks. Well, well, folks, that was my interview with the guys from A Moment in Pompeii, Antonio, Sam, Sam, and Josh. I want to thank all four of them for being on the podcast today. And Doug, I know you weren't on the podcast today, but hi, Doug. I just want to say hi to you as well. When it comes to A Moment in Pompeii, I implore you, listen to Hands of God when it comes out on March 11, 2022. And be sure to, you know, pre-save and, you know, make sure that everything is ready for the new ep which is coming out again on march 1st it is called longing for substance you're not gonna want to miss out so like them on social media follow them all their stuff listen to their stuff stream their stuff everything whatever you know about moment in pompeii when it comes to following them online and being you know getting into them and being like i'm gonna be a fan of this band everything is the link in the description of the podcast for you under find a moment in pompeii online everything is there for you to like share subscribe listen to everything that they have on there also this is the Core Progression Podcast, so thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. If you're not following us on social media, our links are description below as well. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and the TikTok. We also have the podcast right here on YouTube as well, so be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you want, prefer to listen to an audio version, we have it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and on Amazon as well. Link description below for that as well. So please give us a like, share, follow, whatever it is. You know, tell your friends, tell your family, uh, tell your neighbor across the street, tell the guy that just absolutely loves metal that you're not at, like saying next week your next concert. Please do it. Helps us out a lot. So thank you. 
And I want to thank our sponsors, you know, Phoenix Fitness Custom Debuts. Their links and their promo codes in the description of the podcast below as well. Um, I, I hope you guys really enjoy this episode as well because we went in deep with some of these things. I, I know it's more of a touchy subject as well, especially when we're talking about hands of God, talking about organized religion, uh, a little bit more specifics on the Christianity side of this bit as well because all five of us that were talking during this podcast – we all have experiences within that as well. I do want to absolutely thank Josh for sharing that story that he has as well. And I think it was like, I'm, I'm, I'm still kind of stunned by it. Honestly, it's just, I, I'm, I'm glad that he shared it because it's important to share these things when you're comfortable sharing them because it will help other people that potentially went through something like that. Get, you know, potentially some more courage, some more confidence to, to understand that there are other people out there that have gone through things that you have gone through that understand that as well. And that, you know, we're here to support you and help you through that as well, no matter how long it takes. So if you've gone through something like that and you're looking for a person to reach out to, and you're not necessarily sure who to reach out to, feel free to DM us here at the Core Progression Podcast, because you know, who's going to answer those DMs? Me. So if you're looking for someone to talk to, just anything, feel free to send me a DM and I'll respond to you. And you know, anything I can do to help. So yeah, uh, I know there are other, re- I'm, uh, I'll see if I can find any other resources as well for stuff like that as well. So like, you know, if you're looking for so I'll put it in the description of the podcast as well to help you out as well. But I do want to thank Josh for sharing that as well. Um, if you are more heavily involved in any organized religion or Christianity as well, and you, you know, kind of disagree with some of the things we said in the podcast, I, again, we totally understand that because again, different perspectives and everything just, We'd love to have a dialogue with you as well. So if you disagree with anything on the podcast that was said or you have a different opinion on certain things, feel free to send me a DM as well. Uh, Have a conversation. Love to have a constructive conversation with any of you as well. So feel free to do that. Um, When it comes to DMs, I mean, you can send us a message on Facebook or DM us on Twitter or Instagram. I'm pretty much much always on Instagram. It's kind of the best place to honestly do it. I'm not going to lie. So uh, if you're looking to just get in a conversation with us there, you can do that. Otherwise, um, again, I want to thank Josh for in this story. So I want to thank Sam, Sam and Antonio for sharing their stuff as well. Really going deep into this. I hope you guys become a fan of a moment in Pompeii after this, because they're a fantastic band. They're very tight knit and you can tell they care about each other and they care about as many people as they can immensely. So yeah, that's what I'm going to say about that. So on that note, that's going to be for me today, guys. Thank you for watching and listening to the Core Progression Podcast brought to you by the Core Progression Podcast. I keep doing that, though. My name is Kevin, and you guys know how I am every single way. That's the big, healthy, and hearty. 